Well, when I look at this render, I see that everything is a bit too sharp. Like the corners of the surfaces are unnaturally sharp. They are like a knife. I did some more renders like this one we can also see here maybe not so bad but on the front muscle here it's super sharp and I have a couple more renders. I enjoyed this project it's like uh, I started this Lamborghini Gallardo model for 20th anniversary of Gallardo because it first produced in 2003 and now we are in 2024 so I'm a year late. It's supposed to finish last year but it's a personal project so I was taking my time. So it's 21st anniversary of Lamborghini Gallardo. I love this car. But in this video, I want to focus on the bevel problem that you might be also facing. Okay, here when we zoom in, you can even see it better. Like it starts to look very fake because of there is no radius at all. And I use bevel weights. I talked about it on my advanced course. I have my YouTube video about this. So even if I like the feeling of these renders, I kind of realize that it's not okay to say these are the final renders because I, it really started to bother me once you realize it starts to bother you more and more so let me show you the model here is the 3d model on the render view on the cycles view and you can see that i only use the bevel weights i do that for efficiency during the design process like while playing around because rather than edging adding all the edge loops it's way faster to just add bevel weight and get the sharp edges and when i talk about bevel weights i'm talking about the control that you can decide how sharp you want the edge but the result doesn't seem like that so let me explain why here i just made a quick surface model to show you in a better way and i added the bevel weights it is five millimeters two segments and the profile shape is one so everything is correct and i can see that we have a nice fillet here it's not like as sharp as knife and if i play with my bevel here like i will decrease a little bit the sharpness i mean increase the sharpness and as you see i have the control over it up to some level I can go very sharp or I can get a bigger fillet so I will keep it five millimeter here but let's say I'm working on other parts of the model that's what I want to show you like here on the other window I will go to another part of the model somewhere around here and I pick this vertex and I just double G it but I want you to look at the right side of the window look at this uh, bevel what will happen here so I'm just moving a vertex around I'm not changing the bevel or anything but the bevel start to change and it even becomes like a sharp as knife type of thing. It loses the realistic uh, shades, realistic light catching on the corner. So the reason for that, if I zoom in here, it's a very small area of the surface and it kind of does the bevel on this edge, right? So it creates other edge loops around it. But if I just bring this vertex very close to the other one, then it doesn't have enough space anymore to create five millimeters bevel here. And in that case, it just loses the whole bevel for the whole model because I have one bevel modifier which affects all these bevel weights. And that's what happened on my Gallardo model. Probably somewhere around the headlights or some smaller areas of surface, I brought two loops, two edges very close to each other and it made me lose the realistic radius around the corners. How to fix that? Well, you can divide your bevel weights, like you can, rather than the weight, again, I talked about these on my Blender Advanced Car Design course as well. I can go to Vertex Group and I can put the big radius areas, like the big faces, I can put them into one vertex group and one bevel modifier. So the smaller areas I can control in a different, in a different bevel modifier. This would give me flexibility to keep my big surfaces always as I want. Or what I'm going to do on the Gallardo model is I will just finalize the design because the design is done it's basically like the first generation guy out there anyway but I want to finalize the model and I will apply the bevel modifier but rather than just going to modifier and hit ctrl a and apply it I will do it manually to have more control for example I'm gonna pick this edge loop here or actually this is the correct version so first let's move this very close to the other one so I lost my still we didn't lose let's get even more closer so now I lost this realistic radius around it so now what I would do is I would pick this edge until wherever I want the bevel to go for example let's say until here only and I will just hit ctrl b and I will just create my bevel but if I want to use an exact uh, dimensions like by millimeters I need to first ctrl a to apply all transformations and now I can just hit ctrl b make like two segments bevel here and then I have like a little window opening now I can write here for example five millimeters 
and the shape I want it to be one and I want it to be two segments. So basically I created my bevel. But still I have the blue lines, the bevel weight around. So before deselecting it, I will just go to end item and the bevel weight, I will just make it zero. So now on the object mode, as you see, we have the bevel physically because now we know we want the bevel here. I will not modify it anymore. So I can just finalize my bevel. So here it started to create the problems. And the reason for that is, for example, we have another bevel running around and it's kind of disconnected here. So I need to just increase the bevel weight here and I can do the same one there. So as you see, we keep this bevel exactly how we want. And on the smaller area, step by step, I can just apply the bevels here too. Like now I would apply probably this edge, I would make a bevel. And the rest is being this, for me, a bit boring topology thing that you need to fix and go into details. So sometimes it's not worth it. Like if it's not a visible part, if it's not that much visible on your model, you can just keep it like that. But depends on how much detail you want, you can of course always go deeper into that. So I hope this helps. I'm gonna continue doing this Gallardo model. And of course, when the model is completely finished, I will save it with different stages, like before applying the bevel and after applying the bevel and so on. And I will upload it to my Blender Advanced Car Design course. You can find the details on my website. See you on the next video.